Well, now I'd like to move along to uh, our build along tonight with uh, Martin Breckbuild MMR. You all have met uh, Martin many times. He's uh, showed us some fantastic modeling in the past. And this tonight he's going to be building a uh, Kershaw models kit. Uh, Martin, welcome. Evening, Jim. Let's see if I can get things to work here. That looks like it's working. Yes, sir. So we'll pick up where we were, wherever that was. It's lost in time a week ago, so I don't know where it was or when it was. But apparently we put together the basic shell, the structure, according to my notes. And I have no choice but to believe them at this point. So we'll go forward since going backwards is counterproductive. This is the parts, or these are the parts for this little bump out section on the side of the building. Um, <clears throat> put some corner posts on, this is card stock. The other one of these was missing. Eh, one thirty second basswood is roughly as thick as the card stock. And I've got plenty of one thirty second basswood around. In fact, I probably have enough for two or three hobby shops. Now that I think about it. So a little scrap of that out of the scrap box, using the old one, the, the, the provided one as a template, I've got the other half, no big deal. Uh, this is one of those things, you know, sometimes it's worth nagging a, a vendor for a part. Sometimes it's just easier to go forward, uh, particularly with something not complicated. You probably have the parts in your shop anyhow, so you don't sweat it and you just go forward. Why waste time? Well, unless you want to do just that. Okay, so you put that together. There's a window, there's some corner posts. I actually trimmed these off, beveled them in advance of putting the roof on. A little bit of ACC and some goo. You put it together, it comes out fairly straight. You, you can use a square, you can eyeball it. I tend to eyeball things. I'm too lazy to go run and find a small square. Okay, so this is not in the instructions because there's no hole in the side of the wall where this is, where this hole is. But if you're gonna add a bump out, well, how do people get into it? And how do they use it? And what's the point of a bump out if you can't get into it? And if you have a window, do you really wanna look, look through and see a dark hole or do you wanna see clabbered? Or do you want to see something on the inside? So if you're going to put an interior or put some details in this, or maybe a, a figure looking out the window, whatever you do, you probably want to open this up. So it's a little tricky opening it up once you've got it assembled. Um, and the way I did that was to slide this over, well, clamp a, uh, a hunk of two by four on the side of my radial saw table, or your, your workbench, the kitchen table, whatever it is, slide this over the two by four to hold it on its on this with this facing up and then just slice this hole out with a scalpel and it takes a couple of passes because that's 16 inch thick milled clabber but it does come out and a couple of these ex extra pieces of uh corner beam stock just frame it out and make it smooth edges and if you measure against the bump out you've already made you know the dimensions you want so this should fit right up tight against it. Gosh, it almost does. Uh, tacked it in place with some goo and some ACC. We'll worry about the gaps later when we put the sheathing on the outside of this. But it's not a big deal to uh, cut a hole inside of your kit. I've uh, done this many times. And uh, the most infamous one is the church that's on my layout, which after I got it assembled, I decided it was too big. So I turned it on its side and ran it through the bandsaw and took off a third of the back of it. It's amazing what you can do with a sharp blade on a bandsaw. Goes right through most O scale kits. So you've got this corrugated siding, roofing, whatever it is provided in the kit. I have no idea what this stuff really is made out of. It's some sort of paper, wood product, card. I'm not sure what it is. But it's very nice looking. It has a nice appearance, nice corrugation, although it is a bit fragile. Uh, it tends to break, oddly enough, right in the valleys of the corrugation. 
fancy that. Um, but with some care, I painted it with some platinum mist. It gets you a nice silvery color. With, I've got a couple of bottles that's still left over on the shelf. You can find some uh, flat aluminum, flat steel, whatever you'd like to paint this. But painting some things in advance pays off because doing it later is sometimes harder. So I sliced and diced it up into three foot wide pieces, bits, and stuck it on this, stacked it up. It looks a little bit better than the one side of my tractor shed up in Pennsylvania, but uh, I think it'll do okay. I might need a little uh, of a bit of a massage to uh, get it flattened down and to uh, putting a window back in place here. But you get creative with that. Um, scalpels and hammers and anvils and things come into mind. Okay, so we're going to look forward to doing the roofing. Thanks a little forethought here. Uh, the, the roofing here that's supplied is just cardstock again. Doesn't give you a lot of surface area to tack it down just with a 16th inch all the way around. So I've gone and added the larger bracing boards, put a, a ridge pole across, put some bracing here, 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 here. This is also where we trimmed off the tops of these uh, corner posts, sanded them to match the uh, roof angle, and also taken a, uh, a sanding block, in my case, a two by four with a piece of uh, 100 grit sandpaper on it, and put a bevel on the top of the uh, clabber. So the roof will sit down nice and tight and smooth on there. So you'll get maximum surface area to tack that roof down. So you don't want to come, you don't want to see it peeling up later and you don't want some unsightly gaps in it. So do here, down here at the bottom, I didn't bother to put that much, I didn't put a piece across the top here because I'm not going to worry about that because of the root, type of roofing that gets on that roof. Okay, I started painting. And uh, my better half goes through my, uh, selection of paints and says, these are the colors you're going to use. Okay, yes, dear. Um, she has a better eye than I do sometimes, most times, almost always. And she's not in the room. Uh, well, most times, so if she's in the room, it's always. Uh, Canadian National Gray, I don't know why I even have this bottle of paint, but it's not a bad color. Brunswick Green, I have too many bottles of that. I should put on eBay and uh, supplement my retirement, uh, some roof red for the door. Okay, it's door red now. And get a little bit of that Brunswick green on the doorknob. Now's as good as any time before you forget. I mean, it may be harder to get there later. And while I was at it, I thought, well, you know, I've added this bump out on the outside with an opening. I'm gonna add some more interior walls just for fun and just to block some light, the light passage through the first floor. Just scrap a uh, 132nd basswood, just build a couple of partitions and tack them in place with some goo and, and ACC. They're not in any particular uh, configuration. I mean, you think about it, how, how picky do you wanna get on this? Because there's no stairway to get upstairs. And the windows are small, and I'm not so sure how an O-scale human being can even stand up there. So we're not going to worry about uh, reality. We're going to, it's selectively compressed downwards on the second floor. We're not going to worry about it. We're not going to, well, we're going to suspend our disbelief just as long as we look at this. <clears throat> this is also the time to paint the windows. And that back door, paint the buns with green. Paint them now glaze them. Half the laser cut window glazing was missing. So what? You don't worry about these things. You've got acetate, you've got styrene. I don't use styrene, but I like to use Lexan, Lexan uh, polycarbonate. You get it from Clover House. You can get it in five or 10 thousandths thick. It doesn't react with ACC. So it doesn't uh, cloud up on you. You just glue it in place. Well, I'm going to add shades to all the windows at least halfway down because uh, 
we'll find out in the future, the pr privacy is rather important to the people who meet at this bar. Uh, they don't like uh, interlopers uh, poking through the windows and staring them down. They're uh, a peculiar group of individuals. So we've got the windows in. Okay. The windows don't quite fit in the holes. They're about a millimeter, half a millimeter small in both directions. So you want to consistently remove from the center, probably, you, or the outside to widen the windows. Pick one or the other, but do it consistently. And I think consistently you want to remove space from the top. You don't want to take, lower the windows any further than they are. A sharp scalpel, new blade. This goes very easily. You just need to take them just enough off to get the windows to drop in. They drop in. You can see the shades I've added. And it is getting gloomy on this model, which is just what I wanted, actually. A, a certain amount of gloom. Uh, and anybody who wants to look up gloominess and uh, at an intersection of Innsmouth, uh, feel free to do so. You'll get ahead of the story though. And there will be a storyline here eventually, someday, probably next week. But I'm gonna stop here and uh, go find the wits that I left in my jar, in the mayonnaise jar on the back porch at uh, Funk and Wagnalls and uh, take whatever questions you have. Well, Martin, I think you've certainly captured the gloominess of Carl Gallain. Uh, after all, that's less frequented by humans. So you've got uh -oh. gloomy down. You've looked thing you have looked things up, have you now? <laughs> now that's from another another lifetime. Thank you very you're much. Naughty, you naughty boy. You, uh, you're, you're jumping the gun on the storyline. <laughs> it's, it's going to get more interesting. I assure you, I, I'll, I'll do everything I can to make it more interesting. Uh, the, you know, other people seem to want to put stories together, and I figured I'm going to do something a little peculiar, which should we, shoot. Uh, we, 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 trust, we, we trust you, Martin. No problem. Oh, gosh, there's a, there's a confession of foolishness. <laughs> <laughs> any, any other questions, gentlemen? Ladies and gentlemen, whichever you are. Resounding silence, crickets in the house. Okay. Thank you, Martin. You did a beautiful job again. Well, we'll, we'll see you next week and I'll stop sharing there. <laughs>